Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to, to sit on a panel with so many distinguished entrepreneurs and executives uh, and, and to look before an audience filled with professors and citizens and journalists and, and others from the open data community. Um, I got my start in this world in a kind of circuitous way from about the age of eight until uh, all the way through college. I was an entrepreneur and, and focused on, on business. And then, and then I made the choice to go to law school. And I spent a decade working in and around government and law and policy. Um, after, after graduate school, I, I went to Mexico on a Fulbright Fellowship and studied transparency in the Mexican government. Uh, they had passed the Freedom of Information Act, loosely modeled on the US law, but actually better written than, than the US FOIA. And, and I was studying how well it was being implemented in that country with, with such a long history in the 20th century of autocracy and socialism. Um, I, I was then a law clerk for a federal judge and, and a litigator uh, before spending half of last year in Afghanistan, where I was an advisor to two US Army generals on the Transparency and Anti-Corruption Task Force that was set up by David Petraeus at the International Security Assistance Forces headquarters in Kabul. And while that wasn't really about open data, it was, it was loosely about transparency and, and, and mapping organized criminal networks that were undercutting uh, the, the hoped for open uh, and democratic governance in that troubled country. Closer to home here in Silicon Valley, um, we're, we're building a company in this open data space. And so it's, it's particularly exciting to answer the, the couple of questions that have been posed today, namely how can open data help democratic governance and what are some of the challenges and successes uh, that, that we've seen as entrepreneurs or executives working in this space. Um, working in and around government from the private sector I know two things. It's absolutely fascinating, and it's very complicated. Um, this is not the space where most entrepreneurs are working, in Silicon Valley or elsewhere. And there's good reason for it, because it's really hard. Um, on the other hand, it's really important. And, and there's a lot to learn, and there's a lot of good to be done. Uh, so we're, we're perfectly thrilled to be involved in it. And I suspect you'll get that same answer from everyone on this panel. Um, why is it hard, and, and why is it fascinating? Government data is complicated data. Uh, that's very different. A lot of people use the term big data very loosely. Uh, the CTO at our company is from the world of big data. The big data involves petabytes and terabytes of data, typically streaming data, uh, like you see in ad networks. Um, complicated data, on the other hand, concerns maybe all the data of, around permitting in the construction industry or around financial data and charts of accounts or around crime data and traffic data and health data and some of the other data sets that the entrepreneurs here are working with. Um, it's different. It's fascinating. It's, it's complicated and hard, but it's not, it's not big data. Um, in, in our space, in, in the financial world, government accounting is very different than corporate accounting. In many respects, it's much more complicated. And one of the basic reasons it's more complicated is you have a different bank account, typically, for all of the revenue sources. There's many different tax revenues. There's many different non-tax revenue sources. And those feed the services and the operations that touch our lives every day. Um, these multi-fund environments are, uh, are, you know, not, most people are not familiar with them unless they really care about government. I suspect a number of people in the audience today are familiar with them, but it probably doesn't run that much further than, than this room. Um, just closing a, a financial statement for a government is difficult. If you're dealing with monthly, uh, people, people talk about integrations, particularly in the private sector when you're building software, and that's integrating with existing systems. In government, um, governments don't work like hedge funds where you could, you could measure an outcome on a, on a daily or an hourly or a minute basis. How are we doing today isn't a question that's asked in government typically because you typically close the books at the end of a month. And for some governments, it's the end of a quarter. And for others, it's even the end of a year. And that auditing process takes time um, and makes it difficult. 
there's political complexity. Um, many in this room know more about it than, than I do. Um, but, but at the top, you typically have professional accountants, professional lawyers, or others that have risen through the ranks. And they've gotten to positions of great responsibility and authority, not through taking huge risks. Um, the cultures in many of these organizations have incentives that are sometimes upside down. Um, where you can suffer a career hit if you take a risk and it's the wrong it's the wrong bet. Whereas if you make the right bet, you're not you don't see a lot of reward, financial or otherwise. That seems to be changing. It's changing because of visionary leaders like some of those in this room and some of those who will be on panels uh, later today. Um, what we see often in governments is triage too. We don't have enough staff, and we have so many things to do. How can we possibly do it all? Love what you're doing, but why don't we get to it later? Um, that's tough, and that's not the way it works in a lot of banks or other, or other companies. So if you're a B2B company as opposed to a B2G company, you, you often don't have the kind of sales cycles that, that come uh, in the government space. The agendas are difficult, too. Politics is politics. Some people want to look out for themselves. Some people um, want to look out at what others are doing rather than everyone being aligned on a shared mission. That's, of course, the goal of any company is to align disparate interests and drive towards one goal. In government, it's about getting everyone together and kind of getting an agenda set, but it's very, very difficult given you've got a governing body, you've got professional staff, you've got um, many others involved, and then all sorts of constituents in there. Um, I, the sales cycles are, are difficult. How do you innovate in this world? So it's not just how do you innovate with data, it's how do you innovate with purchasing? How do you innovate um, in terms of conveying your message or your information, whatever your product or service is? Um, many decision makers in government uh, probably don't think about open data a lot and may not know they could benefit from new technologies or innovations in this field. And so a lot of it is uh, not just about competition, but straight up education. Um, here's what we can do for you. Here's why you should be interested. That's challenging. Uh, the mission is just critical. Um, and it's super exciting. And it's one of the reasons why this conference is, is a great event. Um, it can open data, broadly speaking, and then all the different subsectors and verticals within it can improve governance by saving staff time, um, by improving decision making. Uh, and, and perhaps most Im importantly, but most diffusely, by improving trust in the community and by engaging citizens. Jim, Jim Keane, the, the manager of Palo Alto, uh, had lunch with us a few months ago and, and noted that the value of trust in his community is simply priceless. It's not the kind of thing he could actually put a dollar amount on precisely because it's so valuable. Uh, it's the kind of thing he said that allows the government in Palo Alto to govern. Um, as far as the business climate goes, open data can help compare, you know, improve competition with vendors, uh, compare costs, and all of these things can improve the quality of the services that, that we get from government and that we expect from government, and, and through that, the quality of our, our lives as a, as a polity. Um, with that, I'll close and I'll look forward to the panel. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, thanks for putting this event on.